In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Sunloo Standard Resin, telling you my thoughts on how it looks, how it performs, and just if it's worthwhile picking up for miniature printing. Full disclosure, Sunloo did send me over their bottles of resin for me to try out and give you my honest review. So let's get on with the video. So this Sunloo resin is basically their, their basic kind of resin, and it came in this really pearly white when I got it. The bottle itself is this nice kind of sturdy plastic. It's got this grip along the side here. Um, it doesn't have any issues. One thing I found that was really interesting actually is the seal on the lid to the bottle is really tight and it's definitely tighter than other bottles I've used in the past. And I don't know if that's going to be a big deal for many people, but for me, it's just nice knowing it's really secure, feels robust, doesn't feel like it might explode like some of the caps of other resin brands out there have been known if you give them a good shake to kind of pop off. So that's always reassuring. <laughs> Moving across onto the resin itself. And when I first poured this out, I thought that I'd got a bad batch because it's really, really runny. I've used lots of different resins and they often come in slightly different consistencies, but this came and it, it was like the consistency of milk. And because it's white as well, it was really odd using it. So I poured it in and I did a test print because I was really convinced that this wasn't gonna work. But to my surprise, it did a fantastic job. I didn't have to dial in any settings or anything like that and print it off perfectly. And I went off and I printed off a few different models and tried it all out. And that runningness is actually a massive benefit in my opinion. And this is where this resin really comes into its own. So for me, this has been my favorite resin to use in terms of the cleanup process. And it's the complete opposite end of something like the Elgu 8K resin that I used, that which is a really thick resin. Because this is so runny, it cleans really, really easily. So literally, as soon as I was taking the models off the printer, they were, they, they, they like drip dry. So the resin just ran off it really nicely. So when you start to dip it in the alcohol and everything else like that, it's a really easy cleaning process, which is just very welcome. Also as well, if you get anything down on like your slap mat and stuff, it's easy enough to clean up again because it's just so runny. It's a really odd consistency. Until you use it, it's kind of hard to figure it out. I, like I said, I thought it was a faulty batch because it was so runny, but it works perfectly out of the bottle. Moving across onto print quality. So I've got a few things up on the screen there for you to have a look at. Print quality is really good. It's hard to see on these white models, but the one thing that I love is actually in the pure white that it comes off on. They're really, really nice prints. And for some of these like larger statues, I've got these Ladies of Chaos that I printed off. You can't quite make out the details, unfortunately, but I do go on to prime them, so don't worry. But actually in this white format, they're actually really nice just to kind of leave like that. I could imagine just putting like a gloss varnish over the top of them and making them look almost like this really bright white stone. I really like the way it looks. Obviously to get the quality to show up on camera, I also went back in and I did a prime on these as well so you can pick out the details. And the details of this is just as good as any other resin I've used in the past. So there's no loss there, considering this is like their basic resin, it looks fantastic. I also went ahead and I painted up this Savage Orc on Warbore. This is by Avatars of War and it came out really nicely. Again, the resin captures a lot of details on there. So at that miniature scale, you still get some really good quality prints coming off this printer. Moving across onto the durability test and things weren't as forgiving. Now, bear in mind when I do this test, this isn't advertised as a durable resin. It's not an ABS like resin or anything like that, but I was curious to see how it would turn out. So for this test, how it works, I use three demons by one page rules. And the reason I use these is because they have all these fiddly bits that are very easy to break off. And it's representative of a lot of things out there in the miniature world. So I dropped them from three different heights. And those heights are like the low shelf height, which is 20 inches high. You've then got the tabletop gaming height of about 34 inches. And then you've got the display height, if you put them on like a top shelf, of 62 inches. So I print three of these and I see how far they can get throughout the test. And on the very first test, one brush broke and two survived, so that was pretty good going. But when it got to that middle tabletop height, the next two did break, unfortunately. So nothing survived through to that top shelf height. Now, this is kind of what I expected from it. Like I said, it's just a standard resin, gives great quality, but the durability isn't up there. If you are gonna be careless, or if you need something that's gonna be more robust, it is worthwhile bearing that in mind that it's not as durable as something like an ABS-like resin. However, at least they didn't shatter on just a single drop on that bottom shelf, because that would have been really disappointing. So they, they came in where I would expect this kind of resin to. So all in all, I've been really impressed with this resin in terms of the quality it gives me and just the ease of use of it. I don't know why this runnier resin for me just made so much more sense. It's just so easy to clean up. And because I print off a lot of minis, it just takes out some of that extra hassle of really having to like get in there and give them a really good clean. This stuff just cleaned up very, very nicely. Quality is also fantastic. So at that miniature scale, you're still gonna get all of those details. It's still gonna look fantastic. But the one thing to consider is obviously that durability side of it. You don't get quite as much durability 
as you do with something like an ABS Lite resin, but then there is that also difference in the price. It all comes down to what you're doing. If you're printing off larger models, for example, if you're printing off stuff that's more statuesque, then this is quite a nice resin to use. If you're printing off a more fiddly, miniatures then maybe look at something like an ABS light resin just in case however if you're printing off a lot and you don't play with clumsy players and you don't drop things that much it's still a really good resin and gives a decent amount of robustness so I hope that video has helped you out if you've got any questions about it throw it down in the comments below thank you so much for Sunloo for sending this over it's been a really interesting experience using this I love the fact that it's just so runny it's weird but it's just a nice resin to use thanks for watching hit that like and subscribe button and come along for some more content and if you want to buy any of the gear that i use you'll find all my affiliate links down below i'll see you in the next one bye